Okay, here's our video for writing rational equations from graphs. Um, before I begin real quickly, I want you to know that the PDF that I have in Google Classroom has um, a lot of detailed information about the problems, but for the sake of the video, to keep it as short as possible um, and as brief as possible, I won't be writing all that out here. I'll be talking about it showing some information, but if you need more detail, please go look at the PDFs in your Google Classroom. So our goal is to take this graph and write the equation for it. Remember that um, you have your Schrady sheet that takes you step by step through the different pieces of the function. Um, the basic idea is that roots give you information for your numerator. Vertical asymptotes give you information for your denominator, and a horizontal asymptote will give you information about is it top heavy, bottom heavy, or balanced. Um, and then we'll also be looking at problems that have slant asymptotes. And the, if you see any open circles like this, those are discontinuities or holes, that gives you information about a factor that was canceled from the numerator and the denominator that because it was the same on top and bottom. So that's the basic idea here. Um, so let's just get started. So this root right here is six zero. And you'll notice that the graph crosses through, so it's not tangent. Now the factor form that would give us the solution of x equals 6 for this point would be x minus 6. And because the graph is not tangent, we know that that factor, once we place it in our equation, is not squared. Same thing for this root over here. This is negative 1, 0. Uh, the factored form for that is x plus 1, and it's not squared because it's not tangent at that point. So if I were to go ahead and start forming my equation. I already know that in the numerator I have x minus 6 and x plus 1. And I'm going to put an a here to for the leading coefficient of the function and we'll have to find that. Um, then the vertical asymptotes, this one is x equals 3. The factored form that would give me that solution is x minus 3. And you can see how on opposite sides of the asymptote it's going away, okay? Meaning it's not coming together on both sides. If it was coming together, we would know that this factor should be squared. But since it's going away, it is not squared. So we already have that one for our denominator. Um, this vertical asymptote, one, two, x equals negative 5 comes from a factored form of x plus 5 and since it's going away also we know not to square that factor. And then let's talk about this discontinuity, this, this hole right here. That x value right there is x equals 2. That comes from a factored form of x minus 2 and that would occur when we have a common factor that gets canceled from top and bottom. So I know I have that right there in both places. So that's all the factor information that we can get from this graph. Now we have to figure out a way to find our A value. And depending on whether your situation is balanced, top heavy or bottom heavy, we'll have different approaches for finding A. This one is the more straight, easier approach because I have a horizontal asymptote that's non-zero, I know that this is a balanced situation as far as my leading terms go. Their leading or the leading exponents are equal. Um, so this, the equation of this line is y equals negative 2. That means whatever my leading coefficients are, my leading terms, when they simplify, the variables cancel out, leaving me negative 2. That's going to be my A value in a balanced situation. Because if you imagine everything in standard form, you take your leading terms, 
the variables cancel, leaving you negative 2, that's going to be your, your A value. So my final um, answer, I'm just going to replace this A with a negative 2. And we are done. Let's talk about, at the bottom of the page, it asks us for domain and range. So there are, so domain is all the x values left to right that have a point somewhere on the graph. And this graph has three pieces. There are three places where our domain is going to be interrupted. This vertical asymptote, this vertical asymptote, and this discontinuity right here. So coming from negative infinity going to the right towards positive infinity, um, my domain is interrupted here at the negative 5. And then I keep going, so it picks up right after negative 5. It's interrupted again here, where x equals 2. There's no other x's if I go vertically up and down. There's no other points at that x value. Then keep going after that, negative 2. It's interrupted again at, or sorry, that was positive 2. It's interrupted at, again at 3 and then goes on to positive infinity. So we're going to write our domain in interval notation. So... We said negative infinity to negative 5 picks up again after negative 5 to positive 2, picks up after 2, and, and it gets interrupted again at 3, and then picks up at 3 and goes to infinity. And we're going to use our join symbol to join those sections together. And then the range is going to be all the y values that have a point on one of the graph pieces. So here we're going from negative infinity up to positive and looking for anywhere that there's a break in the y's. And in this case, if you notice, the really only place we really have to explore is this discontinuity because below that there's y values and above that every y value has a point on some piece. But here we want to talk about it. it kind of looks like at this point there's no y value. But if we just trace this over here, as x goes out to negative infinity, this part of the graph, so I have this, I'm going to extend my horizontal asymptote. And this piece of the graph is going to gradually approach that as it goes out to infinity. So at some point in time, even though there's no y value at this hole, some point in time over here that y value will have a point so there this is actually all real numbers for the domain from negative infinity to positive so on the back let's look at this one I want to encourage you to actually pause the video right here and see how far you can get on your own writing this equation My free recording software is going to stop me at 15 minutes, so if I don't get through this entire problem before it starts, I will pick up where I left off in the second video for this lesson. All right, so let's look, see what we got here. We have um, a root here at 8, 0 that comes from a factored form of x minus 8 and it is crossing through it is not being it's not a tangent situation where it bounces and comes back down so we know that's not going to be squared I have this root which is at negative 1 0 that's going to come from a factored form of x plus 1 and it's crossing through it's not a tangent so I know I'm not going to square it and that is all the roots that I have. So I'm going to start building my equation. A times x plus 1 times x minus 8. I'm going to look at my vertical asymptotes now. There are three of them. I have x equals negative 7. That comes from factored form x plus 7 and it's going away on both sides 
so I know I don't square that x plus 7. The next vertical asymptote right here is at x equals negative 2. That comes from a factored form of x plus 2. And behavior on either side is not together, so it's not going to be squared. And then my last vertical asymptote is at x equals 1. That comes from a factored form of x minus 1. And it's, again, not together. It's going away on either side, so I'm not going to square it. And then the last place to find factor information is at the discontinuity. That x value is 8. That would have come from a factored form of x plus 8. And remember that discontinuities occur when you canceled a factor from the top and the bottom. So I have that common factor top and bottom. And let's look at any horizontal asymptote information. So I can tell by the behavior of the graph that I have a horizontal asymptote here at y equals 0. And if you're wondering how can I have a root on that axis and an asymptote on the axis, remember that horizontal asymptotes only determine end behavior as x gets really, really big or really, really small. It's OK for a graph to cross. What's going to happen? when it does cross through at the asymptote, it's going to pass through, and then as it gets out to infinity, it's going to be brought back down closer and closer to that asymptote. Is what's going to, that's the behavior in a situation like that. Um, okay, so now, since this is not a balanced situation, I can't just take my asymptote value and plug it in for A, so we're going to have to do some math, and this is exactly how we've done in the past with other parent functions. You take a pretty point, hopefully one that has integer values, and plug it in and then solve for a. And so there's one already marked here for us. That point right there is negative 5, 1. And so that's an x value and a y value, so I'm just plugging that in. I'm plugging in 1 for the y. And negative 5 every place I see an x. So I'm going to now simplify all of those parentheses. and try and cancel anywhere where I have common factors or a fraction that I can reduce. So I see that I have threes that cancel. Negative four over negative two can simplify to negative two. And then negative two over negative six, I'm going to simplify that further to a positive one third. So if I did that correctly, I have a negative 13a left on top and a negative 9 on the bottom. So that's negative over negative is a plus plus. So to cancel 13 ninths, I can multiply both sides by 9 thirteenths. They can't, so everything cancels here, but the a. So 9 thirteenths equals A. And then so my final equation, I'm going to put 9 thirteenths. Actually, instead of rewriting this whole thing, let me just go back here. So where I have this A, I'm just going to replace it with my fraction. 9 on top and 13 on the bottom. And I was able to get that done before the video cut me off. Superb. And there's going to be one more video for this lesson for the last problem.